Hi folks, welcome to this video on technology in sport. So, this kind of comes in the same section as commercialization, media, sponsorship, all that golden triangle stuff on that little video. So again, what we're, the, the point I'm making there is you're probably going to get a question on one of those on the exam and it's going to be usually a pros, cons or a discuss question on you know commercialization, sponsorship, media or in this case technology on the sport or the performer, the spectators or the officials. Now that's the new one. If you've seen the video on commercialization, sponsorship and media, there wasn't really anything to do with the officials. Whereas here, technology is used by officials all, a lot in large games. And that's the issue with this topic that I think people have. They try and think about all different types of technology. Well, just think about, have ideas of all this technology that we see in sport, but related to either sport, the performer, the spectators or the officials. So what we're going to do is, one at a time, we're just going to take each of these um, categories here, one, two, and three. I'm going to look at the pros and cons and examples of different types of technology and, you know, look a little bit of a discussion on whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, okay? Now, you're going to see me use these pictures for different ones, but that's kind of the point. There is a bit of overlap between sport, performers, officials, coaches, things like that. So, basically, we've got the sport and the performer. Let's have a look at a few advantages. I'm going to write the advantages in blue. And then we're going to look at the disadvantages of technology for the sport and the performer. And I'm going to write those in red. So let's have a look at some of the advantages first. So in terms of the advantages of different types of technology to the performer, as we said, let's deal with them one at a time. Technology can be equipment that we're wearing, helmets, shin pads, things like that. So we've got reduced injury risk. That's going to benefit the sport and the performer. Fewer players out injured, uh, less chance of injury to certain individuals. That's fantastic. We've got things like Hawkeye that's a different type of technology and also video replays. You know, the big thing in football is goal line technology that's coming or, you know, is in the process of coming in. So video replays, so we get the correct decisions. There's no more farcical decisions. That benefits performers in the sport. We've got things like retractable roofs at places like Wembley in the Millennium Stadium. Uh, no, not Wembley, is it? Actually, no, there's the Millennium Stadium, sorry, where we can close the roof. And we can make sure that fixtures are not called off. That, again, benefits the sport, benefits the performers. You guaranteed a game. You guaranteed the game to go ahead. Linked in with that, you know, we're stadium, the stadium these days. We've also got a lot of synthetic surfaces that reward skill. Now, what we mean by that is the quality of the surface is maintained. There's no bubbles. There's no divots. There's no potholes. It doesn't get waterlogged. Under pitch heating means that it's always, you know, good to play on which rewards skill, you don't get any unlucky bounces or unlucky rolls of the ball and things like that, which again, benefits the sport and the performer. And also, other kinds of technology, such as timings, distances, pro zone stats, pass completion rates, we can do great performance analysis, so you, the athlete, can then analyse your performance to you know, a, a high level and see where you're going right and see where you're going wrong. So there are a lot of advantages of different types of technology being brought into sport for the sport or the performer. So what about the disadvantages then? It could be a discuss question. Now what I've tried to do is marry them up because obviously in a discuss question you've got to give an argument for and an argument against. So for example, up here look, we said one of the advantages of new technologies you get more protective equipment, reduce risk of injury. But that sometimes means that players take unnecessary risks. You put a helmet on a player, they will start putting their heads in quite dangerous positions. You know, ones that they wouldn't normally do so if they weren't wearing a helmet. So you can put a little bit too much faith in this technology. There's no guarantee you're not going to get a concussion. You're not going to get a fracture. You're not going to get a broken eye socket. Something like that. Um, we also said, didn't we, that, you know, video replays allow correct decisions to be made. But some performers will start to use these replays as a tactic to deliberately slow the play down. To throw your opponent off a little bit. So again, that's not good for the sport, it's not good for the performer. In terms of these three, we said like then we have a few fixtures called off because we can put a roof over, we can put synthetic uh, surfaces on there. But what we've just done there is we've changed the nature of the sport. Isn't sport about a little bit of unpredictability, a bad bounce, a bad roll of the ball, a dodgy decision, something like that? If we control all variables, aren't we at risk of making sport a little bit boring? You know, so there's an issue there. It's valid. You might disagree, but it's a valid point. And finally, one that's kind of out there on its own, but I've linked it to, you know, personal equipment here. It's not available to everyone. 
So there's a cost issue. So what if you can't afford the correct equipment? You're at an immediate disadvantage. So there are a few arguments for and against the use of various types of technology for the sport and the performer. So what we're going to look at now are the pros and cons of various types of technology for the spectators, us that are watching the sports. So you're going to see some overlap. You're going to see some similar pictures, but you know that's kind of the point. We're going to see a bit of overlap. It's just applying the right theory to the right one. Again, I'm going to write the advantages in terms of benefits of technology to the spectators in blue. I'll write the disadvantages, the downsides in red. So some of these pictures are quite similar. Oh, so it's very identical to what we've seen before. A couple of them are. A couple of new ones, but they're all making the same points. What we've got here is the fact that um, with this kind of technology, with Hawkeye, with things like hot spot in cricket, we're getting accurate results and correct decisions, which as a spectator, that's what you want. You don't want to feel like you, you or your team have been cheated. But also, what does it do? It generates a bit of excitement in the crowds. You're discussing, you know, when you watch Wimbledon, you know, all the crowd are going, oh, waiting for the you know ball to land, see whether it was in or out. You know, you see something on Snickometer, on hot spot, um, and you know, you know, you're in with the umpires almost part of the decision making. It may even be a discussion point if you're watching it as part of a group. So there are two valid points for technology and sport. Also, this kind of technology that we see down here that you watch at half time and full time, it's entertaining and informative. You know, when I was a kid growing up, you watched the game, that was it, job done. You didn't know any, you know, you had your own opinions, but you weren't really educated about it. Where now we do get a level of entertainment and education based on stats and setups and formations and things like that. And this picture we've already seen before, as a spectator, sat in the stands here, much more comfort. And I buy a ticket for a game, it's guaranteed that, that game is going to take place. It's very unlikely to get called off if there's a retractable roof. Uh, you know, if we think about Wimbledon again, you know, in the UK, one thing we're guaranteed over the summer is rain. With a retractable roof over centre court, you are guaranteed at least one game to be taking place. So you can get fixtures, you can get through the fixture list quicker with this kind of stuff. So there are some of the key advantages of technology for the spectator. So what about the disadvantages then? So I've linked a few of the disadvantages with the advantages again. What have we got? It's guaranteed we are going to get more breaks in play to make decisions to refer decisions. And not a lot of people like that. We want sport to flow. So there's an issue there. Also with these modern stadia, we have less atmosphere. Okay, It's not the same. It's not quite the same as what we're used to. And that can be a disadvantage to us spectators. I dare say it can be a disadvantage to the performers as well. We mentioned this on the previous one. It's not good for the sport and the performers. Equally, it's not good for the spectators. We can use this kind of technology as a tactic deliberately to throw players out, to throw them off the rhythm, to do a bit of time wasting. Again, that's not a good thing. And again, we made this point with the synthetic surfaces and the retractable roofs and things like that. We're making the results more predictable. If the conditions are set up that reward skill, the best team should win more often than not, or the best players should win more often than not. Now, you might go, well, that's as it should be. You're absolutely right, that's fine. But isn't part of sport the giant killings, the upsets, the results that you never saw coming? They're the talking points. And if the results are, oh, sorry, if the conditions are set up that reward skill, the best players win 99% of the time, and sport becomes very predictable, and if, in all honesty, quite boring and bland particularly from a spectator's point of view, maybe not from the performer's point of view. But they're the key arguments for and against different types of technology for the spectators. So let's move finally on now to the officials. And as I'm sure you can gather, some of these we're going to talk about again because some of these are very, very uh, relatable to officiating in sport. So you might be already formulating some ideas based on what we've just said. Absolutely right, do so, because there's going to be a lot of overlap here again. So what are the key advantages of this various type of technology that we're looking at for the officials. So, again, picture we've seen before, all this kind of technology is massively beneficial to official Hawkeye, square in the air, hot spot. It means that correct decisions are made. There is less issue. How many times do you hear in post-match interviews or terrible referee by, yeah, sorry, terrible decision by the referee, cost us the game, blah, blah, blah. Well, if we can refer decisions, that's not going to happen. It's going to take the pressure off the official, which leads us on to that point, there is less pressure to make on-the-spot decisions. If they want to refer it, they can refer the decision and make sure they get it right. Okay. Equally, players can challenge decisions. I don't think that was out. 
I need I want to challenge it so we get a fourth official's viewpoint, okay? So we can challenge decisions as performers. That benefits the officials as well because it ensures that the correct decision is being made. Something that's unique though, a couple that we haven't mentioned really, we can get better communication between officials. You know, you watch the rugby union now when the players have GoPro uh, cameras on the heads, they have microphones, earplugs, they can communicate instantly with the fourth official outside the ground who can review anything, they can ask for it on the spot. So we have much better communication between officials so we can get, you know, they can work effectively as a team to make the right decision between them. And also with all this technology, we have much higher accuracy in terms of measurements, timings, placings, things like that. You know, long gone are the days of the good old fashioned photo finish where you had to wait a few minutes for it to come through and check. We can get all, you know, we've got slow mo cameras, we've got, uh, you know, timers that can time within fractions of one thousandth of a second. We can split performers apart, we can measure things to within, you know, micro millimeters. You know, we can, we can do things really, really well. So, again, that makes our decision making a lot more accurate from an officiating point of view. But equally, there's going to be some disadvantages. So let's finally finish by looking at those. I'm sure you, along with me, at some point have been shouting at the screen TV before when the referee in a game of rugby or something like that has referred another decision and you're saying, for God's sake, ref, just make a decision, have a backbone, have a spine. There can be a definite over-reliance on this technology. You know, because I can refer it doesn't mean I should all the time. I should make some decisions for myself or else what's the point in having an on-field official? So there can be an over-reliance on this technology. Equally, when they're calling for a decision to be reviewed, it can be really, really disruptive. I'm thinking of England in the Six Nations recently where they went to review a try. It was five minutes looking at the, from this angle, from that angle, then back again from this angle and from that one. And can we check it from over there? And they're still from what a lot of people said, didn't make the correct decision. So it's really disruptive and that can really, you know, upset the balance of the game. The other issue as well is that it's not available everywhere. So, you know, if officials are becoming over-reliant on it, what happens when they then have to officiate a game where this technology isn't available? If you think about Hawkeye at Wimbledon, I think Hawkeye is available on centre court and court number one and that's it. Well, as far as I'm aware, there are over 30 courts at Wimbledon so what if you're you know officiating on one of the outside courts? You know, you're not gonna have the luxury of that kind of technology. So there's another issue as well. And finally, we've said this a few times, it changes the nature of the sport. The sport is you know, isn't the bad decision or a dodgy decision part of the game. You know, it has been forever and ever and ever bad officiating decisions make or break careers. You know, you might again argue that oh no the it should be, you know, we should be able to make effective decisions. I agree, we're absolutely, you're absolutely right. But sometimes, from an entertainment point of view, we need a bad call, we need a bad decision. Sometimes, if you want a giant killing, we need a call to go against someone or for someone else. So, you know, it does change the nature of the sport, all of this technology. It's not just about on-the-spot decisions anymore. So this video has been about all the different kinds of technology. I think it's unlikely you're going to get any questions about a specific type of technology. Instead, you need to be able to see how it affects the various people and the sports and then bring examples into it. So I hope you found this video useful, folks.